Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Kotar 2. Now, I want to try something here really quick with Borna. Now, if Mitra talks to her, um, we use her computer and whatnot to uh, converse. Now, if you look here at my computer use, it's only plus two. T3s, on the other hand, is a total rank of 22. So, I'm going to have T3 talk to Borna and see maybe if that changes stuff. I don't know if that does, but let's see. Oh, Mitra's talking. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. So these are more options than we're used to. I can reprogram the computer behavior core with a process delay without him realizing it. You sound like you know what you're about. Here are the codes. Nice! So we can do that from now on. Okay, cool. We have the codes. Thank you, T3. That is very good to know for future reference. Let's go ahead and talk to these guys here now that we can actually deal with the droid. Ah! Another mark. Uh, I mean, racer. Mark. Mark it. Marketable face. You have a very unique face. It'll be easy to market to the fans. Good cover. So he just goes straight to business. Let's talk to these guys here. Guron. It has to be here. Somewhere. Is there something I can help you find? Interface. Lupo's droid has an interface module for a swoop bike. Interface? Yes! The module helps the droid see what is all about around his bike. And? And that means it can avoid obstacles. All of the obstacles. Even the other swoop bikes. There are other swoop bikes on the track? Lupo's race not only race to use track, but is the only race to run the track backwards. He runs the races backwards? Other swoops come from in front. Hard to see before the crash. Unless... Unless... Unless I can find an interface module for me. I wasn't aware they made those. No, but one has to be here somewhere. I can win if I can find it. Ah. Okay. And how about you, Notobo? <sighs> ah, stranger. Is it not beautiful? Is what not beautiful? Narshida teams with much hope, but all hope is for nothing. Why do you say that? Hope is gone. All credits go to Swoop Bike, but still I lose. Why is that? Swoop is only way for some to leave planet. If Racer wins the races, the prize winnings will pay passage aboard transport. Hmm. So... But if the city is so beautiful, why would you want to leave? I miss my planet, my family. I see enough beauty and want to see beauty of my home again. Why is it you can't win the races then? Lupo Shar got a champion that cannot be beat. Worst of all, it's a droid. How are we supposed to compete with a machine? Perhaps you're not approaching the situation from the right direction. What other direction is there? A droid's brain will always be faster than a sentient's brain. No one can hope to beat him. A droid's body can withstand forces much greater than yours or mine, so Lupo removed the inertial reducers. With less weight, the droid's swoop can go much faster and maneuver much quicker to avoid the fan's blasts. Fans? 
There are fans along the course that will blow you up, down, left, or right. You must compensate for them or else you'll crash. Thanks for the tip. Maybe someone can even the odds. Which we will go ahead and do now. Get to it, T3. C9 T9 Racing Droid. Slice into the droid's central behavior core. Boop. You have bypassed the meager security lockouts. Lupo must have considered the shield adequate protection. There's only one file in the droid's behavioral subroutines. Open file swoop 0001. This file contains all the data needed for the droid to race the swoop track without incident. Let's reprogram the droid. You've reprogrammed the droid to think it's in a race and about to lose. This activates the droid's self-destruct system. Holy crap. Whoops. What's going on here? Hmm. Your droid seems to have... expired. The droid! Lupo will have my gills on a plate! Oh, I didn't know Aqualish had gills. What happened? I believe your droid had a minor malfunction. I saw nothing. I'm ruined. I can't afford to build another one. Those creditors will have my Liku on a plate. Those are his head tentacles. Perhaps someone can buy the gallery from you. Yes, I should be able to get enough to pay everyone off and still have some left over. I must move quickly, but who would buy this Gizka infested hole? And that Twi'lek female in there seems to be interested for some reason. Or, no, that's that's a little too shady. Perhaps Borna Lise? Borna? Yeah, she's been trying to snatch this place out from under, under me for some time now. Borna! Borna! <laughs> okay. Oh. That was... That's cool. I didn't see... I've never seen first person mode on T3 before. By the way, next time that we have Kreia, I've got to uh, show you first person mode with Kreia. Okay, she should be a very happy customer now. You have performed wonderfully. Lupo could not sell me the gallery fast enough, for a very good price, I might add, and left the planet on the first transport with creditors grappling as Liku. Here's a cut of the profits I made off the purchase of this place. They're yours in any case. All this is thanks to you. Huzzah! 2,000 credits. Nice. By the way, we have a ton of credits. Gotta show you that real quick. I have almost 25,000. Now, we probably could go ahead and race, but we'll do that before we leave planet now that we've dealt with that issue and found out we can have the rest of the members of our party um, take care of some of these things that may be a little bit out of Mitra's grasp. By the way, I need to buy that lightsaber part as well before I leave, because that is part of that quest. So this looks like a cantina, perhaps? Uh oh Not yet, sister. We must wait. It's hard to wait. The beautiful exile is so close, so within reach. Still, we must. It is the anticipation. It is the waiting that makes the kill worthwhile. Oh, it's a cantina. I see. Oh. Hi. Twitgar. Psst. And we heard a entertainment promenade. Okay, I I need to I'm heading back to the refugee landing pad. I will head back there. But I have got to see what the rest of this place has in store. Wish the exchange would pack up the refugees and ship them all off to spice camps. Undar. That scudda not male Rodian woman sell cred junk to you? She snatched my business. Take it from me. Are you a merchant too? 
Yes, sell good cred weapons, good cred armor. She grabs my business by leg and drag it away. Much frustration. I would pay good cred to see her gone, dead, ash, brush her away like dust on cargo crate. Hmm. Well, if she's hurting your business, maybe I could talk to her, reach a compromise. Cannot offer good cred, but shave credit off stock. Make good cred worth better cred. Make worth your time? Hmm. I'll do it. Now let's see what you have. You deal with not male, rhodian, female. Until you do, you receive no good cred. Better cred deals with me. Go. Oh, alrighty. Well, let's see if we can do this without causing any issue, because she does have... I do like her, this uh, Rodian. Okay, Greta. Oh, your path returns you here, and I am thankful. Hmm. Did you know Od um, Undar offered me a discount to deal with you? Actually, let's not say deal with you. That sounds bad. Let's see what she has first. Let's grab... Do, 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 do. Fibro blade. Hmm. Now that's a focusing crystal and a blade color crystal. Ugh, I hate the yellow though. But... It's alright. Do not like yellow. It's like my, my least favorite color. So we need to get rid of that relatively quickly. We need to find the cyan. Undar across the way has a problem with you. So many problems beset Undar. It's wonderful he has time to mention just one. I am indeed flattered by his attentions. Your business to me is more important, however. Whatever discount Undar has offered, I shall match it. And if you will permit me... To remain and do business without incident. Done. Well, that's acceptable. Very well. That brings me much relief. Many people here on the moon are somewhat intractable concerning such matters. I didn't know this was a dark side kind of thing. Well, let's head back to Undar. Maybe we can go ahead and get, like, all kinds of different, uh, deals done. Not male, Rodian, female, not gone. You not do job. She seems pretty harmless, so I'm letting her stay. You make promise, say you do this, then hunch step away looking for exit ramp? No. You say you do this, make offer, I accept. No hunch step now. I didn't promise you anything. You deal with not male, Rodian, female. Okay, that's fine. I. You see your weapons first. Oh, she, he's not even going to let me look at the gear. Alright. Well, I'm okay with uh, not dealing with you then, sir. I'm telling you, it's all there. I told you two dozen cases. What am I supposed to do with two? You are going to pay me for the two... Boss. An ambush. Your double-crossing Leku will adorn my wall, Squick. Oh, crap. Um, there seems to be... Leave none alive. There seems to be a misunderstanding here. Looks like Adam's already firing. That's good. Uh... Hmm. So, thug boss it is, huh? Let's get our battle meditation going. And then spam power attack for the win. Oh crap, Adam. Frag grenade! Okay, Adam is down. Let's get our battle meditation up. And we are about to die. Much heals. 
Oh, crap. Okay, Mitra is down. Atten's back up, though, because of his ability. There we go. Woo! That was rough. Shake it off, Mitra. You're good. So what was this all about? We'll take the credits and the remains, though. And an Arcan energy shield. Um... Hmm. Oh. That is locked. Parts and an adhesive grenade. There's got to be more to the story than what we're getting. Because we got this stuff right here. Hmm. Maybe that just kind of gives off the the roughness of Narshida. Hey, I saw that ship you flew in on. My ship. Your ship? I'd lay off the spice if I were you. That's our ship, not yours. Was I talking to you? I tell you, that ship's mine. What makes you think the ship's yours? It's the Ebon Hawk, isn't it? She was stolen from me during a routine run in the Mid-Rim, near the close of the Mandalorian Wars. Hmm. If you can prove the ship's yours, I'll give it back to you. The Registry's 34P7JK. It's got a temperamental hyperdrive, and the turrets can be sluggish and unresponsive against fast-moving fighters. She's also got two secret compartments, one in the cargo hold, right near the plasteel cylinders in the back, and the second beneath the bunks in the starboard cabin. I did not know that about the one beneath the bunks. That's right. I didn't know about the cargo hatch. Well, he could have gotten that information some other way than owning the ship. Come on, he's skifting us. So, you're gonna hand it over now, or are you going to be difficult? Hmm. Can I buy it from you? No deal. A ship's worth its weight in spice on Narshada. And nothing's worth being trapped here another year scrounging freight jobs. Who? Let's see what happens, because I totally, I don't remember this. If the ship's yours, I will return it to you. What? It's our ship. I mean, your ship, that I fly. Good to hear you aren't going to challenge it. That makes things a lot easier. What are you doing? That's going to trap us here. Hmm. If the ship is his, then he deserves it back. I'll be going now. Get used to the solid ground beneath you. <laughs> Let me shoot him in the back. No one has to know. Interesting. So he's gone. There's the refugee sector. <laughs> Don't waste my time. I've got a transport to catch. I think we need to head back to our ship. And see what exactly is happening here. First, let's check this door. No, oh, there's a Trandoshan. That's never a good sign. I don't have any handouts for you. Go bother someone else. Exchange has got this sector carved right down the middle. Soon they'll own everything. Vosk. Hi, Vosk. You are brave to walk here, ex-Jedi. In landing on Nar Shadda, you have stepped into the crate Dragon's Claws. Who are you? I am Vosk, once of the Bonnie Hunters Guild, now no longer. You have nothing to fear from me. How do you know who I am? Much information has reached Nar Shadda of you. Not many will recognize you, but all hunters will. Perhaps you wonder why the surface of the moon does not swarm with bounty hunters eager to capture you. It's because they cannot. It's their law. Laws? Yes, there were oaths to the Bounty Hunter's creed, honored in blood. There were laws to hunts and bounties once upheld, now no longer. This is not known to many, but the Bounty Hunter's creed has been infected. Laws are fragile, broken easily. What laws do they uphold, then? 
A contract is honored, and they are not to attack each other if they are chasing the same prey. So if they were all hunting one person, they couldn't attack each other? Yes, and that is why the Smuggler's Moon has become quieter in the past months. They all hunt Jedi, and they all hunt uselessly. Someone is playing them for fools. Who are some of the prime bounty hunters? And there are many. The Smuggler's Moon has become their home. The entire nest of Gand have come, all of them having left their colony. But they'll not, see, they'll not say why they came here to hunt. It's like, uh, Zuckus. They have strange perspectives on life, on hunting, but they are very effective. Who else? They are the twin sons, two Twi'lek slaves from Ryloth, slaves who have killed their masters and developed a taste for it. They have mastered a dance of death, very beautiful, very dangerous. Hmm. I can handle them both. Anyone else? Then there are the Zug brothers, of course, cast from Duros for attempting to wipe out a rival family of politically set Duros. There are hundreds of their kind, not grouped by blood, but by their cause, who claim they are a new family. They seek to raise enough credits to seize Duros for their own. There are a series of hunter droids that are new to the moon, and there is always Hanhar and Mira. They'll hunt each other until the sun on this system dies and beyond. That was the uh, redhead and the Wookiee. Mira? Mira, once a slave captured by Hanhar, brought to the smuggler's moon. She's still a bounty hunter. Perhaps one of the best I've ever seen. Why is that? Because she does not kill except when she has to. She respects the hunt, not the slaughter. And what about Hanhar? A beast. A Wookiee brought from the Midrim world near my world of Hiskor. He was captured by Zerka and killed the slavers. Now he hunts this moon and other systems. He uses bounty hunting as an excuse for taking slaves and for breaking and killing humans wherever he can find. He is very dangerous, almost unstoppable when angry. That's high praise coming from a Trandoshan. It said he killed his own tribe, but no one knows for sure. So, ain't the guild. Alright, that's... So he's just basically a fount for information on people trying to kill us. Well then, uh, let's head back to the Ebonhawk real quick. See if there's any kind of situation regarding the fact that we just gave our ship away. I haven't heard anything more yet. Are we going the right? Yes, we are. We can also check out that uh, other smuggling compartment near the bunks. Well, no one's here. Why is there a scene going? Oh crap! Is it one of the bounty hunters? Oh, it's the Miraluka! What have you done to the crew? Oh, she's got a saber. And she don't say anything. Okay, let's do force barrier. And... Battle meditation. Let's go! Ow! A stun, maybe? Man, she is taking chunks out of me. Yep, she's gonna kill me. Holy crap. 
Wow, she's very, very effective in what she just did. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I think I will go ahead and end the episode here. And um, we will... Actually, let's go to the load game list here. Yoink. Okay, we got an autosave here at the Ebon Hawk, so we're in good shape. I'll go ahead and end the episode here, and I guess we'll have a rematch against the Mariluka, who just owned my face. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.